Hi, my name's Chris Middleton and I've been kiting and shaping boards for over 20 years. The new trend in kite surfing is the kite specific layer. This is a kite board based on the origins of the original Hawaiian surfboards with the addition of some nose rocker. Over in Maui, they're calling it the Cadillac Cruiser because it's super comfortable, easy access for anyone, it hacks up wind like a train and it works from six to 35 knots. So it's a session saver if the wind dies on you. I've shaped over 200 of these boards and I'm gonna demonstrate through this short series of videos how to make a DIY kite a layer. They're pretty easy to build. You can download three proven outline shapes from the site and I'm gonna show you how to make a rocket blank and shape a board from A to Z. What we're gonna do is use two sheets of 10 millimeter marine plywood, cost us about 100 bucks, 100 euros and some of your free time. I'm gonna demonstrate how to curve the blank using a wooden spacer, uh, eight screw clamps, some expanding polyurethane glue, and a flat surface. I'll just demonstrate for you why these boards work so well. It's this long, straight rail length, which allows it to go upwind really easily, and the flex in the board. Okay, let's get started. These represent a selection of the tools I use. Uh, you don't need to have them all. Sanding blocks, which allow you to keep your rails nice and square. Uh, some shaped sanding forms, which allow you to sand into any curves that you might have. And tools that allow you to uh, mark so that you can mark out where you've got to plane or shape it to. Power tools, uh, you need a jigsaw. Best tools I've ever invested in, not overly expensive. Small scale router, and obviously a sander with some sort of extractor to get rid of the dust. First things first, the blank. What I'm gonna try and do this afternoon is make a blank out of two pieces of marine ply. You need some supports, which are gonna give you a flat surface. I'm gonna put this together. To use the other side. I think. And what we're looking for is four inches, 10 centimeters of gradual scoop, which starts at about 80 centimeters, 31 inches from the nose of the board, working back towards the tail. That just gives you a gradual curve and that helps the board rise up across any undulations when you're riding it. If you want 10 centimeters of rocker, that you give a higher space because there's always, when you glue two pieces of wood together, a return once the wood has the glue has dried in between the two sheets of wood. I'm using here exterior polyurethane, it's a single uh, component glue, and uh, you put it on, stick the two pieces together, clamp them in place, and with a bit of luck everything should come together. Protection on, because it's a pretty horrible substance. And you should use a mask, because it's pretty horrible if you're in a combined space. But seeing as I'm outside, it's not much of a problem. I'm gonna take the top off, because I need quite a lot of it. Right, let's get going. It's a pretty thick glue, so, you do have to be a bit forceful with your squeaky. You have to make sure that these are at 90 degrees. Ooh. 
always easier with two people. Leave that to dry for 24 hours and then we'll see how it turns out. Et voila! Your Kite Alea Blank is ready for the next stage. So I've had the vinyl template cut out and I've stuck that to a piece of uh, agglomerate. What I'm going to do next is use a jigsaw. If you've not got a jigsaw, you can use any sort of saw but obviously it'll demand a certain amount of sanding to get everything cool. Flip it over and that means your board will be symmetrical. I'm just going to cut it out now. I've marked a centre line on the rectangular piece of ply that we've got. Obviously this piece of wood is flat, so it needs to be clamped down so that we can mark it. Take a sharp pencil, pencil is your best friend, and mark around the template to give you a guide as to where you've got to cut to. Flip it over, rinse and repeat. Repeat the same process that we use to cut out the template by cutting out this. And I'm going to leave uh, a saw width distance of material uh, to allow us to be able to sand back to the edge of the form. Next thing we've got to make sure that the rails are 90 degrees to the line which is here and as you can see there's a little bit of spare now you can do that with a sanding block like this the router set up with a copy bit and principally what we're going to do is going to go around this like that and take off the small excess of material that's there flip it over rinse and repeat We're looking to produce an even curve that goes from a flat deck to a quarter round vertical rail. Use a router bit and go round the edge with that and that will give you a quarter of a round all the way around the edge. I've feathered the step that the router tool left all the way around the edge, like that. The first boards that we made, we left the rail like that, nice and boxy. But what we found was it looked better to make this curvature here go down further. And so what I've got is I've got another router bit that I'm going to pass all the way around the other part. And so it's boxy at the tail, more swept in the midsection. And then as I said, it's a radius like a wave ball at the nose. This is the, the router bit which is more swept. This is the uh, uh, quarter circle. And so what we've got to do is we've got to feather this piece into this piece, which has already been done on this side, as you can see. We've gone from a re relatively square edge just here to a more swept deck. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove a portion of the tail to get rid of some of the weight. But I need a line to work to. So 
so I'm choosing about a halfway point. It's not critical, and I'm using my middle finger and the pencil to run around there, and I've got a line which is parallel with this hull of the board. And that's going to serve as my guide, and then I'm going to use my orbital sander, take that away like that. Make it come to a nice radius around the rail. So measuring from the nose 10 centimetres, take the template and align that with the rail. And make sure it comes up to the 10 centimetre mark. You might have to use a clamp. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this further down here to where the, the rocker of the board starts. We use a hand plane, a surf form and a sanding block to curve that off and radius this section around here. measure from the tail of the board up to the first point which is 150 millimeters that's six inches from the tail that's on the center line of the board 38.5 millimeter centers which is one and a half inches and make a pilot hole where we've marked on the center line using a one millimeter drill really fine drill that we're going to go right through the board and we're going to drill with a 5.5 millimeter drill halfway through from the hull and halfway through from the deck because I found the drill doesn't tear the wood and leaves it nice and clean. What I'm going to do here is I've got a vinyl cut logo on the site so you can download that and I've marked the board, not used the centre line, marked just here, so that I've not got a pencil line going through the logo. Because once you've painted it, you cannot sand the line out. Using a squeegee, paintbrush, any coloured acrylic that you choose. I'm going to use black and do the eyes in blue, because that's how I like to see it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to colour the board. You can colour it with any acrylic. Uh, you can use any paint, in fact, uh, because it's a piece of wood. I like yellows and oranges because they stand out really nice against uh, any sea colour. If you want, you can use a brush, but I find the easiest thing is a kitchen spongy and a little bit of water, and you can just fade it along the board. Flip it over, rinse and repeat. We've let the board dry overnight, that's 24 hours, and we've given it a light sanding with a sanding block 120 grit sandpaper. I've mixed up some epoxy resin following the manufacturer's instructions. Just follow any resin that you want to use. And what I'm going to add to that is some silica powder. Aerosil here in France, but I think that's just a trade name. A quantity of that. I should be wearing a mask, but obviously it's difficult to talk, so I'm outside. You need to be using something like this if you're indoors. A salad cream kind of thickness, it needs to look like that. If you've not put enough silica powder in there, you will get clocks or balls of unmixed resin. Just add a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until it goes into a smooth paste like that. That's the secret. Flip it over, rinse and repeat. And you need to make sure that you work from the tail to the nose of the board to get rid of any squeegee lines left in the resin, but not starting in the middle of the board and then working your way out, otherwise you'll get marks in the resin.
I hope these videos will assist you in making your board. What I've tried to do is to give you a surefire, easy method of making your own kiter layer. I build all of my kite layers with Polonia tomentosa, but you can also use red and white cedar. These lightweight woods are ideally suited for making kite layers as they are hydrophobic and have a great strength to weight ratio. Plywood, unfortunately, is 65% heavier than Polonia, so the finished board we've made weighs in at around eight kilos. Whereas if you use Polonia, it'll come in at around five kilos. But remember, if you use any of the above lightweight woods, you will have to give it a fiberglass skin and a hot coat. No fin, single fin, twinser or tri-fin. And I prefer the twinser and tri-fin setups, but they all work. Channels in the hull, I prefer to use concaves. Handles in the boards are also something to remove weight. The outline of the tail shape plays a huge role in making these boards more responsive. On the creative front, there's no shortage of things that you can do. Hand cut marquetry, experimental graphics, adding wooden nose and tail bumpers, surface wood carving, which removes more weight and can provide a great non-slip deck solution. 3D machine cork as a non-slip deck pad, but I also use non-slip vinyl and surf wax. I was hoping to show you the orange kite layer in use, but due to the lockdown, this is not possible. So we'll post that clip once we get back out onto the water. This is Chris Middleton signing off for the moment. Stay safe, tight lines, and may the good winds be with you ASAP. Cheers.